Well, here's another replacement rule. This rule's name is distribution, abbreviated dist, from a statement of the form P wedge Q and R. I'm allowed to replace that with, or it may replace, the corresponding statement P wedge Q and P wedge R. Notice that when I go from this side to this side, the main connective switches first. The main connective is, an, uh, is a wedge here. Now the main connective is an AND. And the main connective has been split in two. It's now two subordinate connectives. And the, the subordinate connective here now becomes the main. And I'm also allowed to do distribution this way from a statement P AND Q wedge R. I may replace that with, or it may replace, the corresponding statement P and Q wedge P and R. And again, notice that when we go from this side to this side or vice versa, the main connective changes from being the AND to the OR, or it changes from being the OR to the AND. The subordinate becomes the main. <coughs> subordinate becomes the main when you go from this side to this side, and so, and so forth. So study these patterns, and uh, this is called distribution. Do you remember this principle from algebra, that if you have A times B plus C, that that's equal to A times B plus A times C? Remember that from your junior high math class? So 7 times 5 plus 3 would be equal to 7 times 5 plus 7 times 3. So it's the same principle but with ampersand and wedge with and and or. <coughs> when we distribute the A across the B and C. So now here's a little uh, proof. And Mark, do you want to be my, be a student here? Right, and I can do that. I'll give you a little proof to do. To do. It's, is, you, is this sound on? Yep. So, well, I'll give you a little proof here. Uh, suppose I have A wedge, B ampersand C, and then I have um, A wedge C, then uh, tilde, tilde G, and then let's have as our Let's have a three-step proof. Tilde G, wedge O, and we want to prove O. Only I didn't leave you much room there, did I? Not much, but we can think it through. Okay, let's think it through. What okay. would you? How would you approach that proof? Well, <clears throat> I guess what I'd be thinking is, I tend to look at small things first. I'd look at this, but I really don't see anything I can do with line three by itself, as much as I'd like to. So I look around and I do see that line one does fit the distribution pattern ever so perfectly. It looks like it fits this upper left one quite nicely. We've got a, a wedge as the main operator, main connective, with an ampersand inside. The P and the A match up, Q and the B, R and the C. So I would consider doing distribution on that line, getting this thing over here, at least an argument or a line of that pattern, uh -huh. and see where it would take me. Do you want to write at least that much down? Well, why don't we just do it on a new okay. sheet of paper. And also, folks, He's doing this completely cold. This was not rehearsed. That was totally cold. <laughs> you paid big money, you can do Me this kind of stuff. Meaning not rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just, we've got lots of paper here. Why don't you hold it and I'll copy it so that we sure. Oh, hey, what a great idea. Okay. okay, so then I'll let you work it then. So you, I do, you I do, do the demo. Well. Okay. Your handwriting's better than mine, but here That's we right. go. So what did he do? Distribution off of line one. So he distributed line one. Okay, so P wedge Q ampersand R turns into P wedge Q ampersand P wedge R. Good. And it may be that's going to do me no good whatsoever, but I've done nothing wrong. I've used distribution correctly. But once writing it down sometimes will give you give me an opportunity to see some things I might want to do. For instance, I now see, I see this A wedge C pattern matching up with this. Uh -huh. I'm just looking for things to kind of match up and hook uh -huh. together. I know if we do commutivity, I flip that around, 
-huh. I can then pull it out using simplification. Okay. So I try that. Uh -huh. Okay. So think of the ampersand as the piv pivot point, and he just switched it, switched it this way. Yeah. Okay. That's so I could pull out the A wedge C using simplification. Good. So now he infers the P from the P ampersand Q formula. And I'm going to add something here. In a lot of systems of logic, when you apply simp, you can only simplify out the left conjunct. And so that's why Mark did that. But in the system of logic that we're using in this class, the simp rule allows you to either pull down the P or else to pull down the Q. And so I could save this step, is then. so he could have gone and just pulled the Q right out of here, uh, but a lot of rules make you do this first and then get to this. So um, this is the way it would appear in many cases. But we, we're allowing simp from either side. Okay. But what Mark did is certainly a valid move. It certainly doesn't hurt anything to make that move and then get to here. So it's certainly mm -hmm. legal and valid. Once I had to kind of think ahead to get to this. I wanted this because I knew if I could get A wedge C, I could do a modus ponens. And even if I didn't look any further than that, if I see a modus ponens, I want to do it. Uh, although, modus ponens will give me this, and maybe I can hook it up with this somehow. Uh -huh. So I do the modus ponens. That'd be from lines two and six. Okay, so can I demo it? Please. P, P horseshoe Q and you in, he inferred the Q. Okay. Yeah. And now I can do a disjunctive syllogism because tilde tilde G is the negation of the left side of this disjunction. The way disjunctive syllogism works, if I know tilde G is true or O is true, and I know that tilde G is false, I know O is true. I like that. Which happens to be my conclusion. Very and once good. I get the conclusion, I'm done. Very good. So. P wedge Q, the negation of the P, he brought down the Q, which was O. Very good. Thank you. Yep.